Hello, welcome to Armchair Sports Talk. My name is Sterling Brown, and we're talking about the NFC North. This is a 10-minute topic where we'll talk about each team in the NFC North. We'll start from worst to first, and we'll look at the projected win totals and analyze all the interesting aspects of every team. So on the NFC North, if we're starting at the bottom, unfortunately, it's got to be the Lions again. Uh, Lions win totals projected at six and a half. Um, seems like that's a common thread between the bottom place teams because we just did the NFC South and the Buccaneers, who I projected at last place were six and a half as well. But um, the Lions, unfortunately, are in the same boat as the Bucks. Under six and a half seems like a pretty good bet to make if you like to bet that kind of thing. Um, they're still rebuilding. Um, one of those rebuilding pieces is carry on Johnson. I think Carrion offers a lot of upside at the running back position. Uh, we already know uh, Matt, I think Patricia, or Tr Matt Patricia, yeah, formerly of the Patriots. Based off of his one season, we know he likes to run the ball a lot. Um, he likes using the running back. They use the running backs in New England. Um, they got rid of Theo Riddick. So it looks like Carrion Johnson is going to be pretty busy, um, hopefully on third downs, catching passes, and if he's able to move the ball on first and second, he should get a decent amount of carries as well. So as a workhorse, running backs are becoming uh, few and far between. Carrion has a, a rare opportunity to stand out on the fantasy side. So I am actually really interested in um, rostering him on, a, on my uh, fantasy season team. So I got him benchmarked there. As far as the rest of the lines go, I like Kenny Galladay too. If you're playing from behind and you're the number one receiver, um, you should do okay. But um, I like to accumulate stats quarters one through three, not just in garbage time, the fourth quarter when the game is out of reach. So um, he's, he's okay. I like him a little bit. Uh, Marvin Jones is getting a little disrespected, in my opinion. He's still a really good receiver. I know it's Kenny Galladay's team. He's their wide receiver of the future. He's a little younger. Um, but uh, let's not forget about Marvin Jones Jr. He's going to do a few things in the passing game. And uh, Matt Stafford, um, unfortunately, he's being coached into a game manager role, even though we know he has the potential to sling the ball and throw for 400-plus yards, as he's done that before pretty sure. Um, so uh, looking at the Lions outlook, uh, it looks like a rebuilding year. They have a few pieces here and there, but um, it looks like they might have to do a little bit of subtraction before they can do the addition they'd like to make the playoffs. So um, Lions do have a few fantasy pieces though, but um, fortunately they should find themselves on the outside looking in. Um, the next team might surprise a few people. The NFC North is a pretty competitive division. Um, Lions are on the bottom half as we just talked about, but I think the Bears might take a step back. Um, a lot of people may be surprised by that because the Bears had a really great defense. I mean, one of the top defenses of all time here in recent memory, you know, on par with the Jaguars that got in the AFC Championship game and the Ravens that uh, won a Super Bowl uh, two times with a really good defense. But I think they had a little bit of luck. If we look at the amount of turnovers that they had in comparison to what uh, most teams average, they're going to have uh, what is commonly referred to as regression to the mean. So they're going to go back to a slightly more average performance. And um, they're not a one-trick pony by any means, but we know who we got to stop on the defensive side. That's Khalil Mack. So if they're able to appropriately um, allocate their double teams and put their best offensive linemen and always – kind of have plays in mind to um, keep him from sacking the quarterback or being in the backfield and causing as much disruption. I think that the Bears are a little more limited. I mean, we give Mitchell Trubisky a lot of credit, um, but he's kind of a mobile quarterback with accuracy issues. So um, he hasn't done enough, in my opinion, to warrant the nine wins that they're projecting him to uh, finish with. So if we're doing over-under of the nine projected wins for the Bears, I would say under. I think they're going to finish in the uh, bottom half of the division. Um, and if I think that they're going to be playing from behind, I think I like their wide receiver, although it was tough. I was thinking about Trey Burton, too. Um, but I like Allen Robinson. I think Allen Robinson does have a nice skill set. Um, he's been hampered, unfortunately, by injuries. And then also playing with – uh, Blake Bortles, uh, that is almost as bad as the injuries. But uh, Blake Bortles is no more. Mitchell Trubisky has a little bit more potential, and he's already shown some growth uh, headed in the right direction. So if Trubisky is able to um, produce at average levels of a, a developing quarterback and the Bears are playing from behind with an innovative uh, offensive-minded coach, I think Allen Robinson could reach some benefits and uh, outperform his uh, current draft position. Um, as far as fantasy goes. So uh, as those drafts get closer and closer and we start um, building up our teams, let's make a mental note to Allen Robinson. 
uh, for the Bears. The uh, next team I have up um, was either going to be the Packers or the Vikings, and it was really close, but I want to add up the Packers here. Um, so, yeah, sneak peek, I have the Vikings winning the division. But uh, the Packers are projected at nine wins. Uh, it's close. I could see ten wins. They're being able to squeak it out, giving them credit to uh, Aaron Rodgers there. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has Devontae Adams coming back. He's a strong wide receiver, great hands. He's uh, relatively healthy. I think he's going to have a great season. Um, but a lot of people know that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is healthy. Um, he now knows to be aware of Khalil Mack. Uh, that really threw off their whole season, him getting hurt in the first game. Um, so with Aaron Rodgers drawing defenses back and focusing on the wide receivers, I think that with the new uh, coach that the Packers have, they should be putting a little bit more emphasis on the running game. So that's not just running the ball, um, which would be smart because you want to make sure that Aaron Rodgers isn't getting sacked um, as frequently as he did because we saw what happened last year. But Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones is my fantasy guy to look at uh, for the Packers. The um, the running back situation is pretty strong. I mean, Jamal Williams is a more than capable backup. We've seen him uh, produce and perform before. Um, but uh, Aaron Jones is the uh, lead back. He uh, has a little bit more talent. I think the coaching staff is going to give him the first crack at things. So if the Packers are able to be more successful and get those 10 wins to put them on the plus side of those nine win total, then uh, Aaron Jones is going to be a big part of the reason why they're able to do that. So as we uh, look at the Packers, look for them to, to get about 10 wins or more and uh, Aaron Jones to be a uh, breakout candidate because they have not had a uh, productive running back to the tune of a thousand plus yards in a couple seasons now. So I think Aaron Jones is going to be the best way to do that. That takes me to my uh, Vikings pick. Uh, the Vikings are getting a little disrespected in regards to the odds to win the Super Bowl. Their uh, 25 to 1 odds are actually pretty favorable, all things considered. So I did throw a, one of my uh, 100 imaginary dollars on the Vikings to win the Super Bowl at 25 to 1. Um, if you watch the NFC South video, you know that the uh, Panthers were my other imaginary bet of $2 for a 45 to 1 odds. So uh, I do like the NFC teams to win the Super Bowl. They have some pretty nice odds. I looked at all of them. Um, unfortunately, they were both in the NFC. It would have been nice to have one in each, so that way I could have possibly had a, a Super Bowl of my picks. But um, the Vikings at plus, uh, sorry, 25 to 1 to win the Super Bowl is nice. They're also projected to get nine total wins on the season. Um, yeah, that's nine wins for the Bears, nine wins for the Packers, and nine wins for the Vikings as the over under. I thought that was a little interesting. I think the Vikings win that battle of nine. I think they're going to go over nine as well and also take that division. Um, assuming they're able to stay healthy, they have a really nice uh, complement of offensive weapons with Kirk Cousins leading the charge of quarterback, uh, Dalvin Cook, if he's able to stay healthy, Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs. They're going to be interchangeable as the wide receiver ones over there, which is a nice way to keep opposing defenses on their heels because they're both very good wide receivers. They have a good tight end in Kyle Rudolph. I think he's probably a better blocker than he is receiver, but even so, he's a top 10 uh, receiving tight end in the NFL. So they have a complement of weapons, and if they can keep Dalvin Cook uh, healthy, I know that they want to run the ball. They want to keep him involved because I referenced Latavius Murray before. Um, Latavius Murray is able to produce in that offense pretty good numbers. So if Dalvin Cook, a better talent, is able to stay healthy uh, the full season, he should be able to give you very nice fantasy numbers. So I do like a lot of the compliments on the Vikings team. I think they can beat you with their good defense, pretty all or above average rather at every position. So uh, they have a really good defense. Um, they have these offensive weapons that I just referenced, so they can beat you in a couple of different ways. Um, I like their coach. He's a tough, hard-nosed coach that um, is going to make sure that they give 100% effort throughout the year, and I think that's going to be enough of an edge um, in addition to the talent to go ahead and take them to that next level. So uh, I like the Vikings to take the NFC North. Um, so going back to recap here, we're going from worst to first. So we have the Lions, the Bears, the Packers, and the Vikings. And on the Lions, we want to look at Carrion Johnson. I really do like him a lot. So I'm just going to reinforce the players that are my favorite. And my favorite in the NFC South is Jameis Winston. My favorite on the Lions is uh, in the NFC North is going to be Carrion Johnson. And then the other fantasy players to keep an eye on are going to be Allen Robinson uh, for the Bears, the wide receiver with the Bears probably playing from behind more than expected. The Packers with Aaron Jones looking to utilize their running backs. And then the Vikings with Dalvin Cook. Um, I think he's in a good spot, assuming he can stay healthy. So there's a good amount of risk there because he has not been able to stay healthy, it seems. So um, that's the summary of our NFC North. Hope you enjoyed the content and look forward to having you next. Uh, having you back next when we tackle the AFC North and the AFC South. All right. Sterling with uh, Armchair Sports signing off. And until next time, thank you.